welcome to this webinar, which is about the new UK right cross council response mode call. I'm really delighted to see so much interest in finding out more about this exciting new development in UK RI's portfolio. My name is Alison Park, and I'm here because I'm the senior responsible officer for the scheme as a whole, working with a fantastic team that's drawn from across UK RI, some of whom you will meet and hear from more today. So I just wanted to say by way of introduction a few points about the scheme and why we're doing this. Um, the pilot cross council responsive mode scheme is a critical new call for UKRI and it fills what we're very aware of as being a known gap in our current set of funding opportunities. So we know that we already fund a considerable amount of interdisciplinary research through each of our individual council responsive mode schemes and through a number of our large strategic and challenge led programs. But we're also acutely aware of the difficulties faced by those whose ideas transcend, combine, or significantly span disciplines. And that's precisely where this pilot new cross council responsive mode scheme comes in. So um, I want to dwell now on the word pilot. Um, because I think that's really an important part of the framing of this for you. So this is a pilot scheme. We're really keen on trying some new things and learning from them as we develop um, the scheme. So we've deliberately designed the pilot scheme to run over two rounds, because that allows us to test and refine our processes from one round to the next. As part of that, we'll be piloting some new approaches, for example, to help us assess a broad range of interdisciplinary applications without placing too big a burden on the community. And as part of that, um, we are pulling together a new interdisciplinary assessment college, um, which will underpin the assessment of the quality of the wide range of new interdisciplinary proposals that we've received. It's worth saying that we do have a call out at the moment for members to join our interdisciplinary assessment college. Um, so if you are interested in that, um, the call is still open. So do please take a look and see if you'd like to apply. So I'll stop there. I'm really grateful to you for sparing the time to find out more about the call. And I hope you find today an informative session. And I look forward to seeing all of your fantastic bids. Thank you. And I'll hand over now to Alex Amy who is the strategic lead for the scheme as a whole. Over to you, Alex. Thank you, Alison, and good afternoon, everyone. And I extend Alison's welcome to the first webinar for this UKRI Cross Research Council Responsive Mode Pilot Scheme. So as Alison said, my name is Alex Amy, and I'm the strategic lead for the scheme. Joining me today will be Samantha Aspinall, who is Head of Interdisciplinary Research Development at the Horizons Institute at the University of um, Leeds and is on secondment to UKRI specifically to help develop and train the Interdisciplinary Assessment College, which will be reviewing the applications to this call. Also joining us is Jenny Morris, who is the Senior Programme Manager for the scheme and also for the Q&A session will be joined by Stephen Meader the Programme Director for the Future Leaders Fellowships and who has a lot of experience in managing a cross-council programme through the fellowship scheme and is on also on the project board for the Cross Research Council Responsive Made Scheme. Behind the scenes supporting us are Montana Walcott, who recently joined UKRI to support the delivery of this call, and Matt Freeman, the FLF Senior Programme Manager supporting the FLF panels. And they will be reviewing the questions and supporting us in the Q&A session to cover as many of the subjects um, as possible that are raised by yourselves. There are over 700 people registered for today's webinar, so that's a lot of people and potentially a lot of questions. So in order to help us manage these, please can I ask that you make a note of your questions, but wait for the presentations to finish before actually posting your question, as you may find it is covered in the information we provide. The aim of today's webinar is to introduce the uh, UKRI Cross Research Council Responsive Made Pilot Scheme to you and explain how this scheme fits with other UKRI funding mechanisms. We will cover the assessment process and the timelines, and then Sam will then provide some information on the Interdisciplinary Assessment College, which he is leading on, and also what we mean by interdisciplinarity and what we want the scheme to achieve. 
Jenny will then go through the outline application process, providing details on eligibility, costings, and what to include in your application. And she will also cover the assessment criteria that your application will be reviewed against and provide a bit more detail on the assessment process for the outline and full stages. At the end, there will be the opportunity for you to ask us questions. And for those of you that submitted questions in advance, hopefully these should all be covered in the presentation material. If you do have questions throughout the webinar, please make sure you put these in the Q&A and not the chat. So, um, as Alison said, this scheme will address a gap in UKRI's current funding provision. And this was identified in the Paul Nurse Review in 2016, and more recently in David Grant's review of UKRI. And the aim of the scheme is to support research that either didn't have a home within UKRI's existing structures or wasn't perceived to have a home by the community. And although current council responsive mode schemes routinely fund interdisciplinary research, the requirements for applicants to identify a home research council to which they can submit their proposal currently disincentivizes research that significantly spans the remits of different research councils. And we want people to be able to write exciting research applications that reflect their vision for what they want that research to do without having to tweak or bend it so that it fits within a particular call or council. And we know how important existing council schemes have been in supporting research and innovation with transformative outcomes for knowledge, the economy and society. And this scheme will do the same for research at the interface between those different disciplines by directly incentivizing interdisciplinary curiosity driven research that spans those disciplinary remits. So given you're on today's webinar, I expect you've already seen the pre-announcement and now the full call text for the outline applications, but just to remind you of the headlines. This scheme is aimed at new interdisciplinary um, ideas emerging from the research community, and it will support projects that transcend, combine or significantly span disciplines involving different knowledge and methodological spheres. And it will support research that can only be addressed through interdisciplinary collaboration and where there is reciprocal benefits across the disciplines. As Alison said, it is a new uh, scheme that we are piloting over two rounds of funding, allowing us to assess demand and to test and refine our process as we go. So this is a learning process for us and we are developing and delivering the scheme in real time. And we will work closely with our colleagues and the research community to rapidly learn and apply lessons from the first round to benefit the second round. And therefore we will be asking applicants to provide um, feedback into an evaluation process. Funding for this initiative was prioritized as part of the last spending review and we have been allocated 65 million pounds for the pilot program. And projects can be supported for up to two years with a full economic cost of between 200,000 or 1.2 million and UKRI would fund 80% of that full economic cost. So we do anticipate making around 36 awards in each round, but this will obviously depend on the size of the project submitted. If smaller projects are awarded, we will be able to fund slightly more, but the budget for each round is around 32.5 million. We are asking research organizations to be mindful of the number of projects we are able to fund, and we expect them to ensure applications from their institution fit the scheme's objectives. And we encourage research organizations to prioritize diverse and distinctive ideas that tread new ground to help support a diversity of ap applicants to this scheme. We already fund a huge amount of excellent interdisciplinary research through our individual council responsive mode schemes where they are anchored by a leading discipline as well as through UKRI's challenge-led and strategic schools. And this scheme will supplement and complement the outstanding interdisciplinary research supported through these mechanisms. Existing research council responsive mode schemes will continue to support interdisciplinary research applications, both within and also across council, council boundaries through the cost council remit agreement. Therefore, you should carefully consider the degree to which your proposal meets the criteria set out for this new scheme. Um, or whether it could be accommodated through existing council-led responsive mode funding opportunities and submitted to a lead council through the cross-council remit agreement. Interdisciplinary research applications that fall within a single research council boundary are ineligible for this scheme, 
Therefore, if your application fits within a single research council remit, it would be rejected from this call based on remit. A small proportion of applications might be suitable for both this call and ex existing responsive mode schemes via the cross council remit agreement. And you must determine which scheme to make your submission to because duplicate applications to different funding opportunities are not permitted. The application process uh, will comprise of two stages, an outline stage that we will run on the Joint Electronic Submission System, or JES as it's more commonly known, and an invited submission of a full stage application that will be submitted through the new UKRI funding service platform. Both stages will be assessed by members of the Interdisciplinary Assessment College that Alison mentioned and that we are currently setting up, and there will be no external peer review. There are several reasons for this decision. Feedback from the cross-council mechanism for supporting research that covers more than one council remit suggests that applications can receive a death by a thousand cuts in external peer review because the proposals are viewed through the lens of a single research discipline and the excitement of the whole project can be lost. And therefore having a specific college experience in working on or supporting interdisciplinary research and specific specifically trained to review these applications should mitigate against this. And we are also mindful of the burden of the on the research community in using external reviewers for what could be a very high number of applications. And therefore these reasons specific to this scheme provide a good opportunity for UKRI to pilot this assessment process. This slide gives an overview of the round one timeline and the activity of applicants is highlighted below the blue arrow. So the call was published on the 25th of May with JES opening on the 8th of June last week, and the call will close on the 20th of July for the outline applications. During July and August, we will be processing the applications within the interdisciplinary responsive mode team. And in September, we will then work with colleagues across the research councils to provide support to, the, to do the remit checks and assigning them to college members. The college members will be asked to review the outline applications between the 16th of October and the 13th of November, and the college chairs will then agree which applications are invited through to full stage by the 21st of November. So applicants will be sent a notification on the 23rd of November informing them of the outcome of their application. The reason for the length of time between the deadline for submitting and an outline application and notification is due to us having to avoid clashes with the Future Leaders Fellowship call and enabling us to manage office resources around the call when we actually don't know how many applications we are going to be processing. Successful applicants will be invited to submit a full application with a deadline of 8th of February. And the full applications will then be reviewed by the college members between the 21st of February and 20th of March. And they will then provide some feedback on the proposal agreed between the college members assigned to that proposal. And then applicants will then be invited to submit a response to this initial feedback between the 15th and 29th of April. And then the college will then have time to review the responses before the panel meetings that are held between the 13th and 17th of May with the moderation of the panel assessments and panel chairs meeting happening between the 20th and 25th of May. So applicants will then be notified of the outcome of their proposal by the end of May, early June. So that's it for me. I'm now going to hand over to Samantha, who's going to talk specifically about the role of the Interdisciplinary Assessment College, what we mean by interdisciplinarity and the scheme objectives. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. So, as Alex said, we will be um, assessing these through the Interdisciplinary Assessment College. Um, this college will support the new Cross Research Council Responsive Mode Pilot Scheme designed to support, to support the new interdisciplinary ideas emerging from the research community outside current disciplinary boundaries. So we're initially seeking around 200 members and 20 people as chairs who have experience of recognizing interdisciplinary research ideas or peer review processes to enable us to respond to potential demand and scope of applications. Of those 200 members, some people will be assigned as roving panel members to help ensure consistency across the different panels. 
The number of college members who are used as assessors for the first round of funding will, will depend, as Alex said, on the applications received. Um, two points here. If, you are, if you're a member of the college, you're still eligible to apply for funding through this scheme. And because we have a clear conflict of interest process in place. I'd like to say that um, colleagues, we're still, um, the applications are still open and it closes, um, the applications close next week, which is the 20th of June. And it says July there, but applications to the college, to the assessment college, close on the 20th of June. And there's some more information in the chat. So we've had a few questions about um, what's the difference between interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary and transdisciplinary. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit about that. So in terms of transdisciplinary, we, um, that implies active co-creation of knowledge between academia and societal partners. A project can be interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary, so there may be two colleagues on here from different research councils who have an idea and they want to work with an external collaborator that is that is okay but if it is one research council application with an external partner that would be considered transdisciplinary and wouldn't be within remit. Multidisciplinary is um, where separate disciplines come together around a common interest so researchers work in self-contained manner with little cross-fertilization or integration across the disciplines, working in silos, if you like, around a common theme. That isn't interdisciplinary. So Alex, next slide, please. So this is our definition, which is in the call text. And um, we've taken this from the REF 2021 Interdisciplinary Advisory Panel report. Interdisciplinary research is understood to achieve outcomes, including new approaches that could not be achieved within the framework of a single discipline. Interdisciplinary research features significant interaction between two or more disciplines and or moves beyond established disciplinary foundations in applying or integrating research approaches from other disciplines. We've had lots of questions about examples that we can give. Um, I've just chosen two here. The first one describes a project where weather radar networks could be used to monitor wildlife, bringing together methods from atmospheric and radar physics that might typically have a home in EPSRC with problems faced by researchers more, more, more closely associated with NERC. This project is an, is an integration of um, methods and approaches um, from different disciplines, different research councils to answer one question. So that's an integration of methods. And the second one talks about a project where techniques for bioprocessing industrial applications and fluid dynamics can be applied to develop laboratory-based human gut models, which can then be used to explore the role of medicines and food on the human microbiome. That actually covers three research councils, MRC, BBSRC and EPSRC. We've also been asked if you will, if applications will be scored higher, um, if more than two research councils are included in your proposal. The answer to that is no, it needs to be two. It can just be two, it could be more than two but that there won't be a scoring system for number of research councils included. Thank you, Alex. So the objectives, um, the scheme is to support interdisciplinary research, looking to unlock new research, new approaches or new methods, as I just described, that would not emerge from established disciplinary thinking, to demonstrate reciprocal research benefits through the integration of distinct disciplinary perspectives and spheres of knowledge, support breakthrough or disruptive ideas and collaborations, incentivize new and unexpected types of interdisciplinary research not routinely funded through existing UKRI responsive mode schemes, and to encourage speculative early stage and high potential interdisciplinary research proposals embracing new concepts, techniques, or technologies. Thank you, Alex. 
So what are we seeking? Well, high quality and creative ideas that transcend, combine, or significantly span research council remits. We're looking for new, unexpected, and novel projects that have potential to lead to breakthrough ideas and collaborations. Research that can only be addressed through interdisciplinary collaboration and projects combining disciplines to create new approaches to a research question, new methodologies or new ways of working. We are looking for reciprocity across the disciplines, with the disciplines involved being changed or transformed by working together. So again, back to that integration benefit. Projects that catalyze new interdisciplinary research through co-creation and design, and ideas with no clear lead UKRI Research Council for Responsive Mode Funding, including applications that significantly span two or more Research Council remits. Thank you, Alex. Okay, so what is out of remit? Well, we are not looking for applications where there is a clear alternative Research Council Responsive Mode scheme, including interdisciplinary research that fits within a single Research Council remit. We have been asked about that, but it, it must span two research councils. We are not looking for projects where the program of work appears siloed, as I talked about multidisciplinary earlier, and where interdisciplinary research outcomes are limited. For example, where work packages are discrete and discipline specific rather than integrating disciplinary knowledge. And lastly, we're not looking for projects where there is an imbalance of the intellectual content and some disciplines appear bolted on. An example of that might be uh, a colleague working in an area who's, who says that who wants to work with somebody perhaps in AI, but the AI element might just be a high throughput computer. The whole project design needs to be integrated. And I think I'm going to hand over, thank you, I'm going to hand over now to Jenny. Thank you, thank you, Samantha. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I will now present the application process, particularly for the outline stage, including who can apply, what costs can be included, and how to apply. And I'll also cover some of how the college will assess your application. So in regards to who is eligible to apply, so please check that both the eligibility of your organisation and your eligibility as an individual, um, which will depend on your role on the grant application. So research grants are open to those research organisations normally eligible for funding from the UKRI research councils, which include UK higher education institutions, research council institutions, UKRI approved independent research organisations and public sector research establishments. There is more information on the UKRI website on whether your organisation has been approved for eligible, to be eligible. If your organisation does not meet the normal eligibility, such as um, businesses or charities, they can still be involved in the project as a project partner. You may apply uh, as an individual or as a team and this may be based at a single institution or across a number of institutions. You may also be involved in any number of applications as a co-investigator or as a project partner, providing you meet the capacity to uh, meet these commitments. There is no restriction on the number of co-investigators on a grant, but each investigator should have a clearly defined role and a contribution to the project. You may only be a principal investigator on one application per round. Thanks, Alex. So in the next few slides, I will cover what the main grant roles are and what their eligibility criteria are. So the principal investigator has the responsibility for the intellectual leadership of the project and its overall management. So the principal investigator is the main contact for UKRI. Co-investigators assist the principal investigator in the leadership and management of the project and if required, may deputise or take over leadership of the project. We welcome principal or co-investigators from a range of career stages, providing they meet the following criteria. So typically you hold a postgraduate degree, although we expect most applicants to have a PhD or equivalent. You should be based in the UK and employed by an eligible uh, research organisation. 
There are some exceptions to this. For example, if you are overseas due to your projects involving long periods in another country, you are located at an eligible international research organisation, for example, CERN, or you'll be moving to the UK to take up an already agreed contract at an eligible organisation um, that is not dependent on the outcome of this application and will remain resident in the UK for the duration of the proposal, uh, proposed project. You should also have a contract of employment of at least um, lecturer level or equivalent. This contract should extend beyond the duration of the proposed grant, or if you're not employed by the submitting organisation, have a formal non-salaried arrangement that extends beyond the duration of the proposed grant, or have an assurance from the submitting organisation that if the proposal is successful, a pre-existing contract of employment at this level will be extended beyond the end of the grant. Thanks, Alex. So the funding opportunity um, has been designed to support international idea, uh, sorry, interdisciplinary ideas emerging from the UK research community. However, we will allow in specific circumstances international co-investigators. These roles need to be fully justified in your case for support and meet the following criteria. So international co-investigators need to be employed by an established international research organisation that is of comparable standing to a recognised eligible UK research organisation. Individuals also need to fit the normal eligibility criteria for a co-investigator, including having the experience and expertise needed to assist the principal investigator in the management and leadership of the project. However, international co-investigators would not normally be eligible to take over the lead of the project as a principal investigator. I must note here that current co-funding arrangements with via international lead agency agreements that are currently in place um, in individual research councils and including the Norway agreement do not apply to this round of the pilot. We will be exploring these arrangements with international funders for round two. Thank you, Alex. If you are a researcher who's not eligible as a principal or co-investigator, but who has provided significant intellectual input into the design and grant writing, you may also be included in the grant as a researcher co-investigator. Please include this in your case for support, but for the purposes of the application, please add research co-investigators as co-investigators within JEDS. There are two other roles I would like to mention. The first is the role of the project partner, Partners are defined as a third party or, or organisation, and that includes international or non-academic collaborators, who provide specific contributions to the team or the project in cash or in kind. Project partners should not be from the submitting or any other organisation shared by investigators to the grant. We do not require letters of support from project partners, and they may change between the outline and the full stage. However, we are encouraging co-creation and design of these proposals and that we involve all of those disciplines of the project from the outset. We're asking for the details of any known project partners at this stage, so we may better manage any conflicts of interest in the assessment process. The second role I wanted to mention was that of the project subcontractor. This again is a third party individual or organisation that is not employed as staff on the grant, but who is subcontracted by the participating organisation to deliver on a specific piece of work or service. Subcontractors, again, are not allowed to be from the investigators' organisations. And subcontracting is subject to participating organisations' procurement rules and must be fully justified in the full application. Project partners can have a dual role as partners and subcontractors. Any agreements between partners um, on all, all contractors on entitlements to project outputs or intellectual property will, should be determined by the parties involved but must be in line with any relevant subsidy control regulations. Thanks, Alex. So I'll now cover um, some uh, topics on timings and costings. So as Alex said earlier, awards can last up to two years. The earliest start date from your project can be the 1st of July, 2024. There is a period of up to six months from the date of the award letter to the commencement of gr um, grant activity. Um, is permitted. So proposed start dates can alter within this period and we anticipate award letters will be sent in June 2024. 
You can apply for costs that cover directly incurred costs that are explicitly identifiable as arising from the conduct of the project. Costing can include the salary for staff employed on the grants, such as postdoctoral staff, or investigators where they're working 100% of their time on the project or when time is um, supported by a full audit trail. Uh, you can also apply for travel and subsidence, and this includes those that support a collaboration with project partners and also access to facilities or resources. And this includes um, things like subcontractors sub costs and then other costs, including consumables and any single item equipment costing less than £10,000, uh, yeah, £10, including VAT. So single item uh, equipment costs above £10,000 including VAT, may also be included only if the equipment is essential to the proposed research and no um, appropriate alternative provisions can be accessed. And UKRI will fund up to 50% of the full economic cost of equipment over this value. So you can also apply for directly allocated costs, and these are resources that are used by the project that are shared by other activities, including the salaries of investigators with estimates of their time spent to charge to the grant. And also then, of course, any estate or shared resources costs. Indirect costs will also be charged to the grant for the costs for your organisation's admin, for example. It should be noted that for this call, fees or stipends to fund master's or doctoral studentships cannot be included. Thank you, Alex. Uh, for the costs for international co-investigators, UKRI will award funding to the UK lead organisation and it's their responsibility to distribute funds to the international organisation. Justified costs will be funded at 100% full economic costs. The total costs claimed for all international co-investors contributing to the project must not exceed 30% of the overall cost of the project at 100% FEC. For international co-investors, costs can cover directly incurred costs such as travel and subsistence, research assistance, including salary costs, any investigator's salary costs, but only where these costs can be fully justified and can be demonstrated that the funding of these salaries by the grants is standard practice of the international research organization and that these costs cannot be covered through other sources. It's important to note as well that international co-investors cannot include estate or direct costs. Thank you, Alex. So in regards to accessing research council facilities and services, this is permitted, but with the following um, does apply. So costs will be funded at 80% for economic costs. You will need to check if you're eligible to access the facility by discussing your request with the facility as soon as possible and before you submit your outline proposal. You should also make sure that you're aware of access procedures, resource availability and timelines at an early stage in the development of your proposal. You may need to apply directly to the facility or service as well as included in your application. You will need to provide a technical assessment, which may be in the form of a quote or approval and confirmation that you can use this facility or service, but this is only required at the full application stage. Extensions to grants will not be given due to the unavailability of facilities intrinsic to the project. So you should make sure that the facility will be able to provide the access or the services during the period of your grant. And under UKRI terms and conditions, the grant needs to start within six months of the award letter, which, as I mentioned, will be around June 2024. Thanks, Alex. So I'll move on now on how to apply. So for the outline stages, you will need to submit an application through the Joint Electronic Submission System, or JES. So all investigators should register for a JES account and arrange verifications required by your research organisations as soon as possible. Project partners don't need to register for JES, um, but where they are known, they can be listed in the project partner section. So when applying, log into JES and um, you can go then to select and search for the call. And by searching for UKRI Cross Research Council Responsive Mode Scheme, this should then populate the field with the correct information. Please note that while for technical reasons this call is hosted by MRC on JES, this is a UKRI Ross Research Council scheme. So I will cover um, what to include in your application over the next few slides, but I just wanted to make the point here that 
in order to complete your application, you do need to ensure that you click the submit document button, which is a step that sometimes is missed and can result in a delay to your submission. Thanks, Alex. So for the outline stage, two documents are required to make your case. Firstly, you need to complete the proposal form in JES. This includes the following fields. Project details, so information about your um, submitting organisation, your project title and proposed start date and duration. Um, and then here you will also provide information on um, the investigators, so including the roles, the names and the organisations of the principal investigators and co-investigators, including any research co-eyes. You should also provide a summary of the vision approach to your projects and how this fits with the scheme objectives. And this should be written in a manner suitable for a range of readers, including a general audience. And this will help you care and match your proposal to college members. If you do have any known project partners, please list them here under the project partners section. If you do not have any at this stage, you do not need to complete this section and you do not need to submit any letters of support. So the final section is the classification of your proposal. And this is really to help UKRI be the most effective in assigning your proposal to the right experts for assessment. So please list the councils for which your proposal is most relevant to, and also list a minimum of five keywords. And these may include research areas, concepts, approaches, techniques, or technologies that will be explored in your, uh, in your proposed research. Thank you. So the secondary mandatory part of the outline application is your two page case for support document, which should be attached to your proposal in JES. Before I cover what should be included in your case for support, I also wanted to mention an optional attachment that should only be reserved for if you would like to flag any specific issues or provide any sensitive information to UKRI head office confidentially, for example, conflicts of interest that are not apparent from your application. So you can provide this information through an optional attachment, and it's a cover letter type attachment in JES. Please note this attachment will not be shared with the panel, and you should not use it to um, describe your proposal. It should only be reserved for if you have things that you would like to flag to um, UKRA. I would also like to point out here that the project costs and justification of resources are not required at the outline stage, and no other attachment types such as CVs or letters of support will be accepted. Thank you. So for your case for support, you should use no more than two sides of A4 to provide evidence that your proposal meets the scheme objectives by addressing the following questions. So the first question is, what are you hoping to achieve with your proposed work? And you should use this question to describe your proposal vision, aims and objectives. And secondly, how does your project align with the scheme objectives? So use this question to demonstrate the interdisciplinary nature of your project. We suggest as guidance to use half of your case for support to answer each question. We're not expecting extensive references and they should all be included within the page limits. Normal UKRI font and formatting rules apply, so at a minimum you should use a font size of 11 in Arial or another sans serif typeface of equivalent size. And this must be formatted with a minimum of a single line and, and standard character spacing and page margins should be no more than two centimetres. Thank you. So the next few slides will now cover how your application will be assessed. So appropriate members of the Interdisciplinary Assessment College will assess your proposal based on the following assessment criteria that are related to the scheme objectives. So the college will be looking for the following criteria under the two questions posed in the case for support. So under what are you hoping to achieve with your proposed work, we are looking for, does the proposed work have the potential to advance current understanding and generate new knowledge, thinking, concepts, techniques, methods or discoveries through interdisciplinary collaborations and disruptive ideas? Does the proposed work, um, is it timely? Is it given, um, given current trends, context and needs? And is there a high potential for delivering groundbreaking and transformative outcomes that could only be achieved through interdisciplinary research? Next slide. So for the second question, how does your project align to the scheme objectives? The panel members will be looking for, does this proposed work clearly demonstrate that the research involved 
involves disciplines from more than one research council and explores new types of and approaches to interdisciplinary research not routinely funded through existing UPRI response road schemes. They'll also be looking to, um, if, if the proposed work includes a project team with the right expertise in the disciplines required for the delivery of the project, and does it demonstrate the potential for reciprocal research benefits through the integration of distinct disciplinary perspectives and spheres of knowledge? And does it demonstrate how um, potential challenges will be addressed in conducting interdisciplinary research and outline how these will be overcome and show that the proposals have been co-created and designed involving all disciplines required for successful delivery of the project? Thank you. So this slide provides an overview of the whole assessment process. The way it's laid out is starting from the top left, going to the right along the top is the outline stage assessment. Then from the bottom right, so going right to left, then that follows the assessment process for the full stage. So starting with the outline application, once your application has been received by UKRI, initial remit checks will be carried out by UKRI staff from across the research councils to ensure that the proposed research is interdisciplinary, significantly expanding or transcending current remit boundaries between the councils. UKRI may reject applications at this stage if they do not meet the objectives of the scheme. We will not at this stage be doing eligibility checks, so applicants should ensure that they adhere to the eligibility rules I presented earlier. Applications are deemed that are deemed to be fit to scheme will next be uh, assessed by three college members and, and they will be assigned based on their appropriate expertise and experience in interdisciplinary research areas, approaches, techniques or technologies that are being proposed. Your application may also be assessed by a general expert in interdisciplinary research, so please ensure that your application is accessible to non-technical experts. Panel members will score your application against the assessment criteria in the cortex. Where scores um, between panel members are divergent, the panel chairs will review these applications and make recommendations. We can only invite a maximum of 300 outline applications to submit the four thirds. So with three, uh, 32 and a half million for the first round, we expect to make around 36 awards. As such, we will be sifting applications at this stage, so only the highest scoring proposals will be invited to submit a full application. This stage may also be used to manage the diversity of applications taken through to full stage based on the balance of a portfolio. And this process will be overseen by the Interdisciplinary Assessment College chairs, who will approve the final recommendations of applications progressing to stage two. Due to the high volume of applications expected for the first round of the pilot scheme, we will not be able to provide written panel feedback to individual applications at the outline stage. If your outline application is rejected, you will receive your score and we will also provide applicants with an overview of the common themes regarding what was considered to be successful and, and unsuccessful applications at this stage. So moving on to the full application process, if you're invited to submit a full application, this will be through the new UKRI funding service. And full details of what you'll be required for that submission will be provided at invitation. So once submitted, um, eligibility and resubmission checks will be conducted at this stage. Once checked, invited full applications will initially be assessed by three college members, and then proposals will be grouped by themes to create panels based on the application submitted. Applications will be scored using the full application assessment criteria. Panel members will also collect feedback and the principal investigators will be invited to provide a response. Once the responses are back, the full applications will then be reviewed by assessment panels. These assessment panels will then agree on the final scores and agree on quality bandings across all the applications. Raving panel members will also provide input on tensioning across all of the panels. Following this, there will be a panel chairs meeting to meet to determine to make the final recommendations. UKRI will in, ensure that there is a mixed portfolio of applications that are supported through the breadth of submissions to the pilot. So following peer review, high quality uh, proposals will be distinguished from those that are not suitable for funding. The very highest quality applications will be selected for funding. Where applications are scored highly, but where the panels sort of struggle to differentiate between their quality, 
a randomized allocation process will be used to select successful applications with stratification applied to ensure diversity of the final portfolio. This process has been shown to help counteract potential biases, both against un un underrepresented groups, but also against high risk or high reward ideas. Adopting this approach will ensure peer review is at the heart of decision making, while recognising that those challenges of tensioning um, a diverse range of ideas that are expected to be submitted to this scheme. So once the outcomes are announced, panel feedback will be provided to all applicants when the outcomes are announced. Thanks, Alex. So I have a few slides here just on the next stage of full submission. So before I mentioned success, uh, as I mentioned, successful outline applications will be invited to submit a full application in late November and full details will be provided at this stage. However, you can expect the following sections and core questions to be asked. So building on the, the outline stage, there will be a section on vision and approach. So that you'll be asked to, um, to uh, answer some questions on what you are hoping to achieve with your proposed work. How does your proposal fit the scheme objectives? But also, how are you going to deliver your proposed work? You'll also be expected to include a section on applicant and team capability to deliver. So why are you the right individual or team to successfully deliver the proposed work? And the format for this section will follow the resume for research and innovation. You will also be asked to include information on resource and cost justification. So what will you need to deliver your proposed work and how much it will cost? and also ethical and responsive, responsible research and innovation. So what are the ethical or RRI implications and issues relating to your proposed work? Thank you, Alex. So as I mentioned, the full applications will be through the funding service. The funding service has a digital question and answer format with sections addressing application questions. I just want to mention here that since the announcement of this scheme, the UKRI has revised the project role types to harmonise roles across the councils for the preparation of the first funding opportunities to launch on the funding service. For example, principal investigators will now become project leads. So um, for the purposes of our call, we are using the old um, grant roles for the outline stage through JES. But once any applicants are invited to full stage, we will give you full instructions on how to convert the, the roles within JES um, to the new roles within the funding service. And further information on changes to project role types can be found um, on the UKRI website. Thank you. Just want to mention here, as this is a pilot scheme, we will be evaluating the process to support UKRI in developing programmes for inter interdisciplinary research and researchers. So as such, you may be contacted um, for feedback as part of this evaluation process. So just a couple more slides left for me, just to remind you of some important dates. So the call closes at 4 p.m. on the 20th of July. You can expect outcomes from the outlines in late um, November. And if you're invited, you will have until the 8th of February 2024 to submit your full application. The assessment of the full applications then will be announced in late May, with award letters estimated around June 2024. And we'll be also planning to launch round two of the call at this time. So finally, where to get some more help. So for help and advice on costings and writing your proposal, please contact your research office um, in the first instance. For specific queries relating to the call, please contact our team using the email UKRI, rm at ukri.org. Um, for help with JES, um, including any eligibility queries, you can contact the JES help desk using this email or telephone number. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the presentation and I'll pa pass over now to uh, Matt Freeman who will be asking the uh, panel some of your questions. <laughs> 